Simple Explanation of Work Ideas by Maurice Nicole Chapter 1 Everyone is two people, the person we suppose ourselves to be and what we really are. Only self-observation shows us this. We cannot understand that we are two people unless we begin to understand what it means to observe ourselves. We see a world outside. That is what our senses give us. But the senses are turned outwards from oneself and cannot see what one is. But we have an organ inside ourselves which can observe this thing called oneself. By means of it we can see our thoughts, feelings, moods. This is the beginning of becoming another person. Our life depends on this thing called oneself. If we wish to have a different life, we first of all have to realize what kind of life we have now. All forms of suffering are due to this one self. As long as we remain this one self, our life cannot alter. It will always attract the same misfortunes, disappointments, and so on. So the work begins with seeing what one is like, what kind of person one is. For example, if we treat people without consideration for their feelings and do not know it, we shall always be suffering from their wish to keep away from us. But not seeing what we are like, we blame others. Unless we see that we are behaving like this, we cannot change. Other people realize what we are like, as we are, we do not, until we begin to observe ourselves. Through not seeing what we are like, we believe we are not properly treated. If we observe what we are thinking and feeling, what we are saying, how we are acting, after a time a new memory begins, a memory about ourselves. From then on we begin to realize we are not what we supposed ourselves to be. We will begin to behave differently, not to blame other people, not to feel owed something. We will begin to realize we are two people and always have been. What we have supposed ourselves to be is imaginary. When we see the contradictions between our imaginary ourselves and what we really are, we begin to change because we are being parted from the illusion of ourselves. We begin to realize that we have rested on an entirely false basis. When we observe what we are really like, we make ourselves open to receive help. Help that can really change us. Help cannot reach us while we are self-satisfied. This work says that help exists for those who begin to realize in every daily act, in everything said and felt, that they are not really what they suppose themselves to be. When we begin to observe ourselves sincerely, our whole fate begins to change. But this means noticing over a long period the way we talk, the way we think, the criticisms we make, the resentment of what is said to us, the way we react to others, the opinions from which we argue, the way we are flattered, how we judge others, our vanity, cruelty, moods, emotions. Unless we detach ourselves from these things, we remain mechanical. Our psychic life, our inner life, is in darkness until we begin to let in a ray of light of consciousness of what is going on in there. For this to happen, we have to divide ourselves in two, an observing part and an observed part. When observing eye is established in us, it is from this eye that everything else follows. It is small and weak to begin with, but it is like a window to let in light. Chapter 2 the object of self-observation is to enable us to change ourselves, but its first object is to make us more conscious of ourselves. Only by making ourselves more conscious to ourselves does it enable us to begin to change. In ordinary life, we see only what is outside us and do not notice what is going on inside us, how we think and feel and speak always in the same way. But we have an internal sense. It is undeveloped, 
but it can be developed and begin to show us what we are really like, and thereby we can be changed. We cannot be changed unless we see the kind of person we are. We practice self-observation in order to increase our consciousness, and without an increase in consciousness, nothing in ourselves or in mankind can be changed. The practical side of this work begins with self-observation, and not with trying to change outer circumstances or other people. But it must be uncritical self-observation. We have naturally a small degree of self-observation, but it never gets beyond a certain point. We begin to criticize ourselves. We stop and begin to put ourselves in the right, to restore the ordinary feeling of ourselves. We have to pass beyond this point, and have the strength to bear what we observe calmly. This is difficult because we are identified, attached to ourselves and naturally are only concerned not to be foolish or ridiculous. We have to observe not only that we have done something wrong, but what happens inside us afterwards. There can be no change in us if we are stopped by self-criticism. In order to begin to observe oneself, begin with something specific. For instance, talking or behaving under certain circumstances. We must get to know these things thoroughly, objectively, without criticizing. When we notice that words come out of our mouths willy-nilly, we begin to see that we have no consciousness, and that there is something not ourselves in us, which we cannot check. We have to study ourselves as if we were another person independent of ourselves. Man is mechanical, the work says and he reacts to life mechanically. The first step in changing oneself is to realize gradually that what one takes as oneself is a machine. We do not see ourselves. We are living in a state of internal darkness, and nothing can be changed unless we let light into this darkness. We imagine we know ourselves, but we are reacting automatically to life at every moment. Self-observation shows us this bit by bit, and self-observation, by letting in light, begins the change in us by its own action. For this light is consciousness, provided that it is uncritical. The illusion that we are conscious and that we are one prevents us from changing. We believe we have a permanent, unchanging I. First we must observe ourselves uncritically. When we begin to realize that things speak out of us and actions take place from us without our consciousness, we begin to get a new view of ourselves. But we think we know and that we remember until self-observation shows us that we are not what we imagine, but our machines. Then uncritical self-observation will prevent many things from taking place in us and show us what is not us at all. It is being asleep to ourselves that makes us go on behaving as we do. This work begins with oneself, and its aim is to change oneself. We miss the point if we think it is about external affairs. Everyone is a point of possible change, and change, whether of oneself or of the world, lies here. If we change, we make room for others, but we cannot change unless we observe ourselves. We are deluded by thinking that what is outside us should be changed. Through our attitude to others all kinds of frictions arise, and we do not see that we are responsible for the situation. But we can become aware that we criticize, and that what others said of us is true. This would mean that we had observed ourselves sufficiently to become more conscious of ourselves and it is this that alters a situation. Self-observation is to make us more conscious of ourselves, and this is the starting point of this system called the work. Chapter 3 Change means to change what one is now. One can no longer retain the same opinions or judge others in the same way. It is not to add to what one is, but to change one's being. 
From this work, man is regarded as not conscious. The first increase of consciousness we can develop is through real self-knowledge, by means of self-observation. We imagine we are fully conscious. We live, the work says, in a world of sleeping humanity, and we ourselves are asleep. Anything can happen in this world, and everything does merely happen. It always will, unless we wake up. If we could awaken, a new world would become possible. First this requires the acknowledgement that we are asleep, and then the giving up of the illusions and pictures of oneself. All our theories of improving the world while we are still asleep merely intensify the sleep of humanity. There are four states of consciousness actual and possible to man. 4. State of objective consciousness. 3. State of self-awareness of self-consciousness, or self-remembering, first truly waking state. 2. So-called waking state. 1. Sleep with dreams. In the first state of consciousness, we are actually asleep in bed. In the second state of consciousness, we walk about the world, occupied with our daily affairs, thinking we are awake. But the third state of consciousness is the first truly waking state, and is actually our right. The fourth state is consciousness of the truth of things as they are. Unless we can attain the third state of consciousness, we cannot receive help. Help can only reach us when we realize we are asleep. Man asleep cannot obtain help. The Work Idea of Help We can get help if we work on ourselves, and through self-remembering raise the level of consciousness in ourselves to a higher state. Then help can reach us. When one realizes one is asleep, one realizes one must have help. There is a work parable that illustrates the situation of man at present. Mankind is fast asleep and is walking towards the edge of a precipice that it does not see. But an individual man can wake up to the realization that he is on the edge of a precipice. And if he were to open his eyes to this, he would see that there is a rope above his head which he can climb up. But in order to reach this rope, he has to jump. When we are on the level where we imagine we can be helped as we are, no help can reach us. For anything better to exist, we must change ourselves. Complacency, self-satisfaction, vanity, ignorance, all these and many other things prevent help from reaching us. Prayer was originally to ask for help to lift one to a higher level of consciousness. The Lord's Prayer is designed to make man remember himself for an entire change of his being so that help can enter him. The nature of help is first to show us where we are wrong. This work teaches that there is help but it only touches a man and makes its presence known when he lifts himself up to it, that is, when he lifts himself up to the third state of consciousness. If we really feel our situation, we will try to lift ourselves to a new level of consciousness.